At the International Helicopter and Unmanned Industry Exhibition in Moscow, the flagship was the S-76, a cargo drone with vertical takeoff and landing. We talked about the start of work on it at the beginning of last year, when the prototype from experimental design bureau Sukhoi was first tested in the air. Since then, as you can see for yourself, the machine has changed significantly while maintaining the original concept. For vertical takeoff and landing, eight electric motors are used. Airplane-like horizontal flight is provided by a lifting wing and a piston gasoline engine with a pusher propeller located at the rear of the fuselage. This design provides high fuel efficiency for long-distance flights even compared to helicopters. With a takeoff weight of 1.5 tons, the C-76 is capable of automatically delivering 300 kilograms of cargo without refueling over a distance of 1,000 kilometers. At the same time, a single operator can control up to 12 of these drones along the route. The cargo cabin volume is 2 cubic meters. It can hold two standard pallets or two transport containers. At the moment, the S-76 is at the stage of testing key technologies. But the developers themselves note that for widespread implementation, it is necessary to create infrastructure, a unified flight control center, landing sites, and a system for interaction between customers and carriers. For now, in our country, the industry is still in its formative stage. And in some sense, the technology is ahead of the development of the legal and infrastructure base. However, there were quite a few other solutions presented at the exhibition, including some that are already in operation. Here are some of them. At this exhibition, we are presenting a new individual navigation system for groups based on a mesh network system. This system allows people to work in a group. In this case, in the civilian sector, we can offer such features as search and search tasks. This system is installed on a mobile device. Maybe the phone doesn't have a communication system, meaning the subscriber identity module card is disabled. It interacts through the receivers of transmitting devices. A mesh network is developed based on these receivers of transmitting devices. What does this provide? This provides a connection between the participants, for example, a search group with a maximum range of about 10 kilometers between them and an effective range of about eight. The more participants in the system, the larger and denser the network becomes, Moreover, if we install this entire system on an airplane, we get a repeater that increases the coverage area of this network up to 70 kilometers. Two repeaters cover 140 kilometers. As a result, we get a large group covered by both navigation and communication. Communication is carried out both by voice signals, transmitting voice signals, and by text messages. Also, each participant can place a mark that another participant in the network will see, in addition to everything else. The network is closed, protected by cryptographic security, and has its own unified infrastructure inside. Accordingly, one group in one network will not see another group in a different network. By and large, it's quite convenient to use during searches or when dealing with some local or small-scale disasters like fires. If the coordinator has exactly the same system, he can coordinate the entire process. And does this system work only with your devices, or is it universal? This system can be installed on any device. Buying our airplane isn't required for retransmission. The system can be installed on a balloon or tethered aerostat to perform the functions. If you have a mobile drone, you can install the system on it to act as a relay, eliminating the need to be tied down. Airplane if you have your own device. We just mentioned our T-16 and T-20 airplanes as an example. The T-16 is an old reliable machine that has proven itself with good flight characteristics, but it's a completely different device. It has an artificial intelligence system that allows you to automate the pilot's work, to recognize, identify, see, and give suggestions. The communication features have also been improved. The video channel range has been almost doubled and the flight time has been increased to four hours. His older brother is T-20. The aircraft is bigger, better, with improved aerodynamics and flight time. The flight time of this aircraft is already six hours. The wearable parts on both aircraft are interchangeable and modular. Various equipment such as video, infrared, spectroanalyzers or gas detectors can be installed as needed. The versatility of these models is that you can put any payload on a single airframe, and that's important. The long-range aircraft's communication range for video data transmission reaches up to 100 kilometers. And again, you can set up a system of repeaters, yes? 
a relay system, in addition to the relay system we've already talked about, can be set up in the system to relay between the fleet. Each aircraft acts as a repeater for the others, allowing coverage of a larger area with a single control station. The Moscow company Tree Machini's maritime drone was noted by our country's top official as a rather promising and interesting model. It can serve as a rescue device for people in the water who need various types of auxiliary equipment to get out of the water. Our second machine is a production model. It's a vehicle that can fly up to 800 kilometers. Well, uh, it's called Aced. And in this case, its modification is presented as Admiral, so Admiral can carry two more aircraft on its external suspension. Our third piece of equipment is a tethered drone. It's used to guard certain facilities. It operates completely in radio silence mode. That is, it's a tethered drone with autonomous power supply. The Odin is our unmanned aerial system, which we are developing in cooperation with Moscow Aviation Institute, the Moscow Aviation Institute. This is a modular drone that has a system of clamps and mounts in the form of plates. With the help of clamps and plates, we can install both the power unit and any suspended equipment. My team makes composite products for us, such as fuel tanks, and they helped with the fuselage and tubes. And what is the advantage of this modularity? Modularity means it's simple and easy to install any external devices, starting from gas analyzers, external magnetometers, cameras, any infrared ones. You make a plate, install a clamp, and hang any external equipment. You can quickly turn a hybrid setup into an electric version. The hybrid currently flies for two hours and carries a payload of one and a half kilograms. This is a pre-production version and the design documentation has been created for it. The company I work for, Technologa, is engaged in production. And at our own production facility, we make absolutely all the products. That is aluminum parts, we mill carbon, the clamp system. In other words, all the mechanical parts are produced at our own facility. After all the tests, when we confirm all the flight characteristics, we will launch a small production run. Pavel, good afternoon. Your name is likely the most romantic among all UAVs. Why is it dandelion? because it resembles the dandelion flower. That's what our chief designer named it. Our drones are designed to monitor land or water surfaces, either individually or as part of a group of drones. That means we can install the payload either on top or on the bottom and swap the modules around. So everything depends on the needs of the end customer. The drone itself uses a coaxial rotor configuration. It has a single support point, which makes it very stable in wind and precipitation. It can operate in heavy rain, sub-zero temperatures, and snowfall. We are the only ones in Russia who have launched such a drone into mass production. China, Israel, England, and the Americans have similar models. So only five countries in total produce these. But all of them are about twice as inferior to our specifications. You can look into this yourself. And where is it produced? Produced in St. Petersburg with an entire in-house production cycle and about 80% localization, the latest delivery was made to the Ministry of Forestry of the Vladimir region. They purchased 28 drones in December 2024. In this configuration with a dual channel thermal imaging camera, they are used for monitoring forest areas, detecting fire sources, and monitoring illegal logging. Also, the largest drone is the second Podovanchik, which can carry a load of about four kilograms. Four kilograms. Look, am I right in understanding that this is a container? Yes, this is a transport container for it. This is the Ampel transport launch container. Oh, even a launch container. So it takes off from here? Yes, it takes off and lands automatically. The container itself can be used for recharging and for heating in cold places. So you can set up these, let's say, drone ports around the perimeter of an object for patrolling. One drone flies until its battery is depleted lands, and another takes off to maintain continuous monitoring when needed. That's very interesting. Is it controlled only with a wired remote, or can it be controlled remotely? It can be controlled remotely.
So you can actually secure quite a large area, so to speak, with these kinds of containers and control them when needed. That's great. This is a very interesting feature. <laughs> In the next episode, we will present you with an exclusive report from a Russian factory where aircraft engine blades are produced. And we'll tell you how this masterpiece of engineering, available to only a few countries, is created. Subscribe to the Vremya Vipper channel on any convenient platform to stay informed about Russia's development.